You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. It's five o'clock and I'm Alice Monroe with your August update. August police are appealing for information following the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw's body was discovered last night. Chief DuPont is calling the crime a violent and despicable act. Anyone with information about the murder is urged to get in touch via the department's confidential tip hotline. It's horrible, Poe. Indeed it is. You need to learn when to keep your mouth shut. Exactly. Rewind. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. It's five o'clock and I'm Alice Monroe with your August update. August police are appealing for information following the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw's body was discovered last night. Chief DuPont is calling the crime a violent and despicable act. Anyone with information about the murder is urged to get in touch via the department's confidential tip hotline. It's horrible, Poe. Indeed it is. You need to learn when to keep your mouth shut. Exactly. Rewind. Listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. It's five o'clock and I'm Alice Monroe with your August update. August police are appealing for information following the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw's body was discovered last night. Chief DuPont is calling the crime a violent and despicable act. Anyone with information about the murder is urged to get in touch via the department's confidential tip hotline. It's horrible, Poe. Indeed it is. You need to learn when to keep your mouth shut. You know why you're here, don't you? The dead girl. And this. What exactly were you thinking? You have one job. Don't get caught. Do you think you can do that this time? Splendid. You're going to a town called August. Find Chief DuPont. He's gonna think you're someone else. This person. This is who you are now. Understood? Understood? Splendid. If someone so much as sniffs that you're different, 
You'll be deprecated. Deprecated. We expect you to use your ability. Just don't get caught. And never, ever change into a child. In brighter news, August resident Mia French is celebrating the return of her missing pooch, Barley. The eight-month-old Basset Hound puppy was found outside Daryl's chicken and ribs. And that's five o'clock with Poe and Monroe. I'm Violet. Welcome to the guest house. There are some rules. In particular, no shoes in the guest house. The carpet's priceless. Now, how long are you staying for? Yes, the chief said it may be a while. I can see you don't mind getting your hands dirty, though. There's not been many visitors of late. Perhaps the murder will bring some tourists in. Sometimes we wish we'd asked something and the moment just... passes. Yes, the murder. You haven't spoken to the chief yet, have you? Chief Dupont. He's the one who booked the room for you. You look lost. You should probably go and speak to the chief. Your room is just down the hall, last on the left. It has its own back door. The chief said that's the way you'd like it. Just finishing. You don't believe? That sounded serious. You must have a serious job to do. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Pleased to meet you, Sam. If you'd like a reading. So, what's your question, Sam? Oh, the Page of Cups. It suggests I'm innocent of whatever it is I'm being accused of. I'm going to be seeing a lot more of you, aren't I, Sam? I'm in room one and that's down the hall. Rain's in two, Lexi's in three. And which room are you in, Sam? Good. We're neighbours. Just knock if you need me. Well, appearance. He had even started to avoid mirrors in fear of catching a glimpse of himself, a pale, gaunt carcass of a man, more akin to a ghost than any living being. But the work kept him going. It had to. Dimitri kept reminding the others, and himself, that they were writing history here. Unimaginable discoveries had been made these last few months, discoveries he had never dared dream of, much less be a part of. When he and the other scientists first arrived here, their excitement had been almost unbearable. But that initial spark of enthusiasm had faded like a falling star in the night sky. On the morning of his 249th day on the moon, or was it night? It was hard to tell up here. Dimitri boarded the elevator to the excavation site, as he had been doing for the last 248 days. He was joined in the elevator by the other three members of his scientific team. Dr. Ian Remington, Dr. Hanako Yutani, and Dr. Wolfgang Whitfield were all experts in their fields, those being paleontology, linguistics, and exobiology respectively. Dimitri glanced at them and for the first time noticed their hollow cheeks and the dark circles under their eyes. It seemed the moon had taken its toll on Earth's best and brightest. As they waited for the elevator to reach the bottom, they went through their schedule for the day, which centred around their latest discovery, a hole of less than two metres wide that seemed to go on for several kilometres into the ground. Its edges were most unusual in that they were astonishingly smooth down to a molecular level. Indeed, it was clear that this hole was not a natural formation. But neither could it have been man-made, the hole was drilled, or otherwise created, over 50 million years ago, 
long before the dawn of the first man. This was one of the few things they had been able to ascertain about their mystifying discovery, and the four scientists knew there was much more to be done. The plan, then, was to send more probes down the hole in order to determine how much deeper it went. They had been doing this for the last 14 days, much to Dimitri's growing frustration. At this point, Dimitri started to wonder if the pit even had a bottom, and dreaded what they would find there if it did. Is it really wise to send more probes down the hole? Dimitri asked as they went over their plans. The three other scientists looked at him questioningly as they waited for him to elaborate. All probes so far have malfunctioned at a depth of 500 meters. Are we really planning to do the same thing while expecting different results? Are you calling us insane? Asked Dr. Whitfield, pretending to be offended. Do you have another suggestion? Dr. Utani offered. Without much thought, Dimitri blurted out, We could send a person down there. Then, again without thinking, added, One of us, perhaps? The others eyed him with concern. I'm not sure that's wise, said Dr. Remington, clearly echoing the thoughts of the other two scientists. Perhaps it was Dimitri's frustration with the project's slow progress and his eagerness for a breakthrough that prompted him to volunteer himself, much to the surprise of the others. I will, he insisted. I'll do it. The three scientists all looked at each other, silently wondering if Dimitri had gone crazy, but they were too tired, too drained to argue. Well, Dr. Whitfield conceded with a sigh, if you're really that sure about it. The others offered no protest. All right, Dr. Sheffield, you're all hooked up and ready to go. The crew member, who had helped him pull on his repelling harness, performed a final check on the crane, which was normally used for lowering the much lighter probes down the abyssal shaft. Dr. Remington had initially objected to using the feeble apparatus, but when no alternative had presented itself, Dimitri had once again insisted that he be strapped in. Dimitri took a deep breath. Let's do it then. The three other scientists standing behind the table with monitoring equipment each gave him a nod, and with that, Dimitri disappeared into the depths. Dr. Sheffield, do you read me? Dimitri was startled by the sudden voice in his ear. He had almost forgotten about the earpiece he was wearing. Yes, Dr. Utani, I hear you loud and clear, he replied. All right, we're going to accelerate your descent a bit, otherwise we'll be here all day. Dr. Utani sounded tired. Besides, we don't want you down there any longer than necessary. Neither do I, thought Dimitri. Even in the moon's low gravity, he could feel his stomach drop as his descent quickly accelerated. He could almost convince himself that he was doing it for the recording device on his arm, or in the small hope that Dr. Utani and the others could still hear him. Good, you got my message. Chief Inspector Dupont. I wasn't sure you'd come, but I suppose you're between jobs? Well, we both know that's not true. But I like it. Sam, that's your cover now. So, the job. Director Shaw. 21, the Compass Cellist, redhead. Strangled. I know who did it, but I need proof. It's the tarot readers. Yes. Keep up, Sam. That's the girl who was murdered. Because they predicted it. The older one, uh, Bronwyn, she came into my office last night talking all crazy and saying Dorota was in trouble. I did my best not to lock her up. It all sounded crazy to me. Tarot, the spirit world, cards that move, trans-dimensional thingamajigs? To be honest, I thought she'd probably been smoking something. And that's why I didn't take it seriously. 
Because things. I don't have enough on her. That's where you come in. The free guest house day isn't free. I need you to work the case and report back to me. Find out things from the inside. Can you do it? Oh, okay. Well, that's that then. I thought you'd want a shot at redemption, but I guess you're turning yourself in. It's what you want, isn't it, Sam? To stop running? To give up? I didn't think so. I'll be telling everyone that you've been hired by the Shores because obviously local law enforcement is either too incompetent or too overworked to solve anything. That gives you a license to talk to people, but only notionally. Don't actually touch people or annoy them. You don't have any real authority, understand? But you help me out, I'll help you. Do I have to spell it out? I'll make your problem go away, or at least sink it to the bottom of a pile of paperwork. Your old town? The problem? Come and find me when you're settled. This is Second Chance Sunday for you, Sam. Don't blow it. What do you want to know? She was a cellist, selected for a scholarship at Juilliard. It was in the local paper. I'm more of a Bon Jovi fan myself. Don't read the paper, do you? Yesterday, Monday the 9th at approximately 9pm, according to the coroner, we got a call from the mother just after 10pm. In her bedroom, she was naked, strangled. No signs of sexual activity of any kind. It was a weird scene to look at. There was one thing, but it's strictly between you and me. Dorota had a gold coin in her mouth. I'm being serious now, Sam. Not a word of this. It's the one thing only the killer would know. Ah, uh, born here, runs the local guest house. Lovely lady. Where are you going with this, Sam? What she told you? She told you she's taking pills, didn't she? Let me handle Violet. She didn't kill anyone. Do, do I have an alibi for last night? Do I? Okay. I was here and there are video monitors that will prove it. Thanks for ruling me out, genius. Not much. Perhaps you should do some investigating? Not much. Perhaps you should do some investigating? Dimitri quickly fell asleep. He couldn't wait to go back home. He awoke later that night, startled by the sounds of loud whispering, and switched on the light next to his bed. It wasn't working, and his eyes... I assume you've been to see Chief DuPont already? Not really. I'm sure she was a precious lamb, though. Yes, a lamb. Young. Innocent. Lambs get slaughtered, though, don't they? Nice, yes, that's a good description. Actually, I thought she was a bit slutty, to be honest. Sorry. I'm gossiping. I don't want to talk ill of the dead. Ask her boyfriend. Oscar lives at the vicarage next to the church. Don't tell him I sent you, though. I'm sure he's sick of seeing people already. There, tarot readers. I'm thinking of asking them to leave, actually. Demands already? I'm only thinking of doing it. It's the strangest thing. I honestly don't remember. But I imagine I was here or getting groceries somewhere. I've driven by it, never actually been in it. I take clozapine. I think they're for anxiety. I'm a very anxious person. Mm. 
I don't know, Dr. Sam, you tell me. Sam, is it? I'm sensing you're not here for a reading. Chief Dupont thinks I did it. I'm hoping you'll convince him otherwise. All I'm asking is that you dig a little deeper than the Chief. I had nothing to do with Dorota's death. We saw danger in the cards and we tried to stop it. Trust me, Sam, we're on the same team. We saw it in the cards, not images, feelings, impressions. Tarot can be very powerful. Not these cards. They only tell us what they want us to know. In my room, reading, I found a trashy romance novel under the bed. I'm assuming it's violets. It's all swooning heroines and brooding vampire Casanovas. Thank God Lexi saved me. She came to my room to chat for a little while. That was around nine, I think. You can ask her. I said the book was trashy. Look at this place. If her guest house is anything to go by, Violet's the opposite of trashy. You must be a new guest, or you're burglaring us. I'm Rain, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Sam. Enjoy your stay. Uh, the hot water goes off at nine, by the way, so it's cold showers from there on in. It really bugs me. I didn't know her. I know she was called Dorota Shaw. She was young, had red hair, a talented musician. Next victim, whoa. <laughs> Hold on a sec, we don't even know if there's gonna be a next victim or not. We'll do another group reading soon, and then we'll have a better idea. We did a reading. A group reading, actually. With a special tarot deck. The three of us get together and read the same cards. Bronwyn says it makes the whole thing stronger or more powerful or something. But I'm pretty sure I'd get the same answers just on my own. Mercury. It's not exactly from here. Uh, with a normal tarot deck, you'd have the question, so you'd be the querent. With Mercury, it gives you the question and the answer. The cards themselves kind of change. It's a special deck. I don't have it at the moment. Bronwyn has it. I was in my room. Praying, actually. I don't believe in God, but I was still praying. It didn't work. I don't believe in anything, but I also believe anything is possible, so... Uh, it's a conundrum. <laughs> Mercury? Sure. I'll just get it. It feels a bit sacrilegious just spreading it out to show you. It doesn't really answer questions, it more asks them. Do you want it to ask you a question, Sam? Hmm. It wants to know if you're happy being the person you are now. Mercury doesn't agree. In fact, if anything, and I could be wrong, it's suggesting that you're not even the person you're saying you are now. I've only had that reading once before. Hi. Hi. Sam, is it? Come on in, make yourself at home. Mi casa es su casa. <laughs> Come on. I don't know anyone in this town, except for Bronwyn and Rain, obviously, and Violet, and the Chief, and now you. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Good old fashioned fortune telling. 
Well, kind of. We drew a card each and smushed them all together. Do you know what the most dangerous tarot card is? <laughs> You've done your research. The happy squirrel was vague and mysterious, but not evil. The Five of Swords? I think so anyway. There's nothing more dangerous than someone taking whatever they want no matter the cost. Yeah, I did. Rain got the Knight of Wands, that's Dorota, and Bromwyn got the Ten of Swords, which is, well, you know, ee -ee -ee. <laughs> swords in general are bad. She's like my big sister, so pretty well. No! The cards told us to. Well, the cards of rain. Taro gives us a rough direction and he narrows it down with some astrological jiggery pokery. He's basically a walking esoteric library. And if that sounds dull, let me reassure you, it is. No? Well, yeah. Well, no. We have a job to do. I didn't say job. I said job. Okay, we make a um, cheese obelisk, a chob, and depending on the shape of that chob, we get different answers to questions. No, you don't. I was in my room all night with Bronwyn. We were um, painting our nails. No, I mean, yeah, I've already cleaned it off. Find somewhere safe to transition. You're not a superhero. It's six o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Police investigating the murder of Dorota Shaw are appealing to the community to help catch her killer. The body of 21-year-old Miss Shaw, an accomplished cellist, was found in her home last night. Police are describing the murder as a violent and despicable act. Monroe? It's just terrible. Meanwhile, out of respect for the victim and her family, this weekend's Tulip Festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced shortly, so do stay tuned to Radio August for updates. I heard Dorota Shaw was due to play this weekend. At the Tulip Festival? Indeed. I understand why they'd want to postpone it. Tonight the weather will be mostly dry and warm, but be on the lookout for dark clouds on the horizon, as there may be scattered showers. Best take an umbrella, Monroe, so you don't get wet. I like getting wet. That's six o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. Bron, are you okay? I'm not okay. I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm okay. I'm not okay. Well, if you're worried, I should be worried. Why are you worried? Should I be worried? Are you worried? Only if you are. This could go on in circles for a while. Let's just keep cool and stay in our rooms.
Is there something I can help with, Miss Castle? I hope we're not being too much trouble. It's very brave of you to tell the Chief that Dorota would be murdered and then stick around afterwards. I'd have run for sure. You strike me as someone braver than that. Why would- You're prime suspect, aren't you? You look strong enough to strangle another woman. Even if you're innocent, a jury would probably convict you. Even if I'm innocent? You look strong enough to strangle another woman too. Even My mind's not made up. I just don't understand why you'd broadcast your victim before you did it. Bron, something doesn't feel right. I don't know what exactly, but it's not right. Thoughts on... Well, it's hard to say with just one victim. Musical talent, red hair. If there's another, there will be a pattern. Do you think it's another right? A right? As in the same thing we were chasing after in Birmingham? I suppose it doesn't really matter. Just have to try and stop it. Stop it? Yes, stop it. If it's a traveller killing things. Traveller? Bron, you're acting weird. Are you still you? Of course. No. Hello, I'm Rain. I'm Rain, I'm Rain, okay. Have you met the new detective yet? We're basically under 24 hour surveillance now. Do you think so? Onto what exactly? What we did, the real reason we're here. What we did, our role in the murder, the real Sam's not a mind reader, at least I don't think so. Just try not to let anything slip. Rain, I'm so worried about Bronwyn. What are we going to do? Why are you worried? The Chief thinks she killed Dorota. Maybe she did kill Dorota. That's not even funny, Rain. Bronwyn's the least murdery person we know. But okay, let's say she did do it. What possible reason could she have for killing Dorota? Psychopathic tendencies? Crime of passion? Maybe. Maybe Bronwyn and Dorota were secretly lovers. And Bronwyn found out that Dorota was seeing someone else and killed her in a jealous fit of rage. Or maybe that's just another one of your twisted late night fantasies. In which case, leave me out of it. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Hello, Lexi. What can I do for you? The police, please. The police want alibis from everyone for last night. Well, I don't have one. I literally can't remember what I was doing. 
Please don't ask. Have you been speaking to Sam? You're safe for the minute. That sounds ominous. If one of your crew did murder Dorota, you can't really stay here, can you? What's up, Lexi? I'm sensing something's on your mind. I'm worried. Don't worry about that. We don't have anything to hide. I'm more worried about Ray. Since when did he start praying? You think he's lying? Of course not. This is rain we're talking about. I was just saying it's odd, that's all. Maybe he's found God? Something's weird, isn't it? Everyone seems strange today. How are you? Do you think Dorota was planning on marrying Oscar? What makes you say that? Well, nothing. It was just something I thought I saw. It, it doesn't matter. Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. You don't trust me, do you, Violet? Is it because I read tarot? Why don't you let me pull a card for you? No, thank you. Great. What do you want to know about? The murder. My love life. Sam. My... Sam. My love life. Ah. The moon. A card of illusion and deception. It shines, but really it's just a dusty old rock. Seems there's more to our detective friend than meets the eye. Did you sleep well last night? Yes, thank you. I didn't see you yesterday evening. I stayed in my room. You can ask Lexi. That reminds me, I think I found a book of yours. It's called He Came Through the Shadows. What makes you think it's mine? Your name's written on the inside cover. Mrs. Gallagher. An unexpected pleasure. How long? In town? I really don't know. Until the tarot tells us to leave, or you kick us out, obviously. <laughs> How did you know Dorota was going to die? We didn't know she was definitely going to die, only that she was definitely in danger of dying. Tarot cards can tell you a lot when you know what you're looking for. Is everything okay? Uh, ignore the mess, I was just going to tidy it up. Did you have a pleasant evening last night? Great, thanks. The room's really lovely. But you weren't in this room, were you? Oh no, was I sleepwalking again? I haven't done that since... for ages. I didn't come into your room, did I? No. Yes. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I do that. It only seems to happen when there's a lot of bad energy floating around. Bronwyn says I just stand there and stare. I didn't catch you, you know, not sleeping, did I?
Hi, I'm... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief Dupont. Who knows whether you've made the right decision or not, Claude. Overly nice. She's covering her tracks well, if she has anything to hide. What was... You just told me to report back to you if I noticed anything suspicious. Good grief, Claude. You're a bit young to be losing your marbles already. What were you doing last night? Claude, we've been through this. I honestly don't remember. I checked my diary and there's no entry, so I was probably here, as always. How can you not remember, Violet? I don't know. Which is exactly what I said in my statement. Don't try and get me to contradict myself. Chief Dupont, what a pleasant surprise. I think we've covered just about everything twice over, but if you think I'm hiding something... Who are you? Does it? bother you, Chief Dupont, knowing there are things in this world that aren't black and white. You don't know what to file me under, and that makes you uncomfortable. Or perhaps you've already made up your mind about me. Why don't you tell me who you think I am? Hmm? You're a con artist. You're a murderer. You're a con artist. I haven't asked anyone for a penny. Good evening, Chief Dupont. Bronwyn never been arrested? Not since I've met her. She's a lawful good type character. If you play D&D. Lexi ever been in trouble with the police? No. Not to my knowledge. She's sweet and innocent. Or haven't you picked up on that yet? Dorota's family. What does the tarot say about them? I can do a reading, if you want. Yeah. It's the Five of Cups. It talks about loss and dealing with that loss. I don't think you need a tarot reader to interpret that one. Oh, Chief Inspector! You gave me a shock. What is it? What have I done? What were you doing? Tell me about... She's an Aquarius. Her favourite colour is green. What else do you need to know? Has she killed before? No. And she hasn't killed this time. Nice try, though. What were you doing last night? Nothing. I mean, I was here all night. This cat's on a bronze can vouch for me. Well, it's not for the nightlife, I can tell you that. This is where the cards told us to go. I guess you could call it destiny. Do you know? No, I can honestly swear I don't know any Augustives? Augustonians? Augustans, until we got here. Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. What's going on, Violet? Is everything okay? Yes, I'm okay. No, I'm not okay. 
What's the matter? I think I might be the killer. Have you... Have you stopped taking the pills? Look, just take the pills. Dr. Tanner said you'd start hearing and seeing things again. You're no good to me like that. Just, just take the goddamn pills. Look, off you go. I'm being subtle. I don't want to see you back here, okay? You've got anything to report, give me a call. Any problems, talk to Danny. Danny, remember? Danny? We just talked about this. I said I'd post somebody this morning, and I did. Then I told you it was Danny. Take the pills, Violet. Take the pills. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. What is it, Miss Taylor? Are Dorota's family safe? Who would... Are you doing your own investigation? Great! Let me know when you find out. Bronwyn thinks you've got it in for her. I go after bad guys. If she's a bad guy, then I've got it in for her. Why weren't the police protecting Dorota? <sighs> in hindsight, that does look like a good idea, doesn't it? We didn't believe you. We still don't. Are Dorota's family safe? Dorota's boyfriend seems sweet. Have you met him? Yes. No. <sighs> still sticking with her, huh? Are Dorota's family safe? Why? What are you going to do? Nothing. Just checking. No. Is that a threat? If anything happens to the Shaw family, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Leave. Now. It's six o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Police investigating the murder of Dorota Shaw are appealing to the community to help catch her killer. The body of 21-year-old Miss Shaw, an accomplished cellist, was found in her home last night. Police are describing the murder as a violent and despicable act. Monroe? It's just terrible. Meanwhile, out of respect for the victim and her family, this weekend's Tulip Festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced shortly. So so do stay tuned to Radio August for updates. I heard Dorota Shaw was due to play this weekend. At the Tulip Festival. Indeed. I understand why they'd want to postpone it. Tonight the weather will be mostly dry and warm, but be on the lookout for dark clouds on the horizon, as there may be scattered showers. Best take an umbrella, Monroe, so you don't get wet. I like getting wet. That's six o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Who are you? Right, because the local police are so rubbish. It's been a day, a whole day. It's typical of them. Yeah, I went round there in the afternoon. Uh, her parents were at work and we were, you know, hanging out. I left at about five. I'm playing football, it's just five aside. Uh, finished at about half nine. I called her, but she never picked up. Not much. They always seemed happy to see me. I don't think they meant it. They wanted Dorota to focus on her music. Not long, a couple of months maybe. We did care for each other. No, no one. She was really popular. What, you mean watching us? That's disturbing. No, no it couldn't have been. The only place you could have hidden would be in the closet, and I suppose someone could have hidden in the closet. 
Yeah, it's big enough for two people to have sex in. On all fours. Clothes, mainly. I did see something that freaked me out a bit. She had a wedding dress in there. She knew I'd seen it, but we never talked about it. Not even as a joke. Any more news on Oscar Wainwright? Yep, that's what you told me too. Not a suspect. Just the tarot readers. No one else is remotely suspicious compared to them. Any reason for saying that? I'll look into it. Rain says he was praying in his room, alone. Nobody corroborates. Bronwyn and Lexi say they were in the same room last night. Shame they can't agree which one. The tarot readers mentioned Birmingham. You're looking into it. There's some talk about a traveller, whatever that is. Oscar's not a suspect. He was playing football last night with lots of witnesses. According to Oscar, Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet, which is strange. Violet says she doesn't remember last night, but I've got that in hand. That's it. No, no, as far as I can tell, Oscar is a good boy. But we've all got different faces now, haven't we, Sam? The masks we wear. I could be a satanic cultist behind closed doors, but you'd never know, would you, Sam? She flaunts herself. Her body. Had boudoir photographs taken. Who do you think those photos were for, Sam? Her mother. Ask Zach Weston. He took them. Zach's the local photographer. You should go and talk to him, Sam. You're good at talking. At Weston's photographic? Off the high road? It's late, but he's always there. I have a good memory. I'm still holding grudges from when I was four. Oh, she gets easily confused. Youth of today. Fine. Jeeve Dupont was breathing down her neck, so we thought it would be simpler if we stuck together. If these walls weren't separating our rooms, then technically, it'd be true. To protect Lexi, none of this is her fault and she gets anxious easily. I was just trying to take the pressure off. I'm, I'm sorry, Sam. I, I never usually lie. I was logged into Tarotasm. It's a phone reading service and I get paid by the minute. Which, now that I'm saying it, it's not something I really should be bragging about. Yes, he came to see me. He wanted to know that she was okay, spiritually speaking. He confided in me quite a bit, actually. He seemed to appreciate having someone to talk to and he knew I couldn't tell anyone what he said. Oh, Sam, you know I can't do that. Tarot reader client confidentiality. So 
Sam. What can I do for you? We didn't. Lexi used a Ouija board to get the name. It's Lexi's thing. I don't personally go near them, but in this case, it did help. No. Lexi needs to give it context from the tarot reading. A lot of the time, it comes up with nothing. Or a sordid comment directed at Lexi. <laughs> I think that's why she keeps using it, to be honest. Once we thought there was going to be a murder, Lexi used the Ouija board to find out the victim's name. It spelled out the rotor. Just... <laughs> this is going to sound weird. Um, most people believe Ouija boards contact the dead. So if Lexi contacts a dead person, that person needs to know what happens in the future. Ergo, maybe the person she's contacting is from the future. A time traveller who died here. Yes. Well, not just time travel, time and space travel is also possible. If we accept the fact there are multiple realities, we must also accept there are others like us who found a way to travel between these realities. We're trying to save people. I said we're trying. We have a gift. We have Mercury, the tarot. It tells us where bad things are going to happen, and we try and stop them. Birmingham. We couldn't save anyone there, either. The problem with travellers is... <laughs> Let's put a pin in this one, Sam. Let me ask Bronwyn. If she says it's okay to talk about it, it's okay to talk about it. Hi Sam, back for more already? No, I think Bronwyn met him though. You'd have to ask her, or him, it's not my place to say. I didn't! How did you find out? Am I in trouble? Ron was worried about me not having an alibi. She was logged in doing phone readings, so she's alright. But there's nothing to prove that I was here. I was though, cross my heart and hope to die. Oh, it's just your run-of-the-mill spirit communication device. Wanna know how it works? Cool, okay. So Ouija boards send us messages from the spirit world, right? But where is the spirit world? I mean, there's planets and stars and space. The spirit world must be really far away beyond all that. We're so far to travel, messages from the spirit world must take ages to get here. Like how light from the sun takes eight minutes or something to reach us. You still with me? Ah, oh, you're sweet. Um, where was I? Oh, so here's my point. The spirit world is actually several hours ahead of us. That's how we get messages about things that haven't happened yet. That's how we got Dorota's name. Because in the spirit world, she was already dead. I know, mind-blowing. Traveller, that's a really old role-playing game, isn't it? Oh, did he now? Well then, you know what I know. I guess you must be a part of our inner circle. How does it feel? It's seven o'clock and here's the latest August update. Chief DuPont of August Police is urging residents to be vigilant tonight following the brutal murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Whilst he stresses there is no immediate threat to the community at large, residents should be on the lookout until the killer is in police custody. Miss Shaw was found strangled in her bedroom home last night. Poe, I heard she was found by her mother. Truly awful. Mother caught me up to all sorts of mischief in my bedroom. Also in the news, emergency services were called to the crossroads at Grange Avenue and Church Street following a collision between two cars. 
There are no reports of any serious injuries, but you might want to take a different route for now. Oh, no. It's going to be one of those nights, Poe. Stay with me, doll. I'll keep you safe. I'm not going anywhere. That's seven o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Your ability isn't endless. It will run out at some point. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. What did you tell the police you were doing last night? You can tell Well, what can I tell Sam that you haven't already? You know Sam likes a fact check. I don't really know Sam. But if you're sure, then I guess I'm sure. What did you tell the police? I told them the truth. That I was in my room. I'm not sure if they can fact check it, but it's the only alibi I've got. I kind of wish we'd all stuck together now. When should we do another reading? The police think it's me, don't they? You already told us. Eight o'clock. Bron, are you okay? Oh, Bron, I'm so glad you're here. We need to talk. Is something wrong? No one can hear us, right? I mean, I'm assuming this room isn't bugged, although knowing Violet, there's probably cameras everywhere. You think Violet's a voyeur? Probably. I don't know. She has that look about her, don't you think? Like she knows something she's not letting on. I wouldn't be surprised if there's cameras hidden in the wardrobe. What have you got? Nothing. Though I'd rather she didn't see me dancing around in my underwear. I only do that for people I love. Do you love me? Of course I do, Bron. See? And now that's on film. I hope you enjoyed that, Violet. Listen, we need to talk about our alibi. What about our alibi? I know you said it would be better if we said we were together, but lying about your alibi, that's pretty serious. Are you sure it was a good idea? We should do whatever it takes. You're acting like we've got something to hide. Bron, is there something you're not telling me? Why'd you ask me to lie? Were you really in your room all night? Yes. No. Where were you? Ron, don't mess me around. You're scaring me. I'm just kidding. I was here all night. I I'm just... Not funny. Didn't expect you to come back. Have you contacted Dorota? Yes. She forgives you. Yes. She says you know who killed her. She said what? Why would she say that? She'd never have said that. Why are you lying to me? I'm probably confused. She said you knew. I knew? Maybe it's someone I know? Is that what she means? Do you get on with Dorota's family? I'm... It's okay, just... How did you know? How did you come up with a name and then... She's gone? She's not gone. She's waiting to pass. How could... The usual way? The front door. Like, it's a townhouse and she's on the third floor. So, other than teleporting or a big ladder, that's the only way. Do you get on with Dorota? Not really. Especially not now. I convinced I got her into the wrong crowd or something. Am I really a bad influence? Yes. Wow. Okay then. You're not really- <laughs> That's okay. 
I'm used to the abuse. Hey, maybe we could hang out together after all. Sure. That's great. I'll be over soon. Just got a few things to clear up here. Hi. Hey. Hello. Sorry, I'm not used to dating so soon. I'm actually not in the mood anymore. It's okay. Oh, um, I, I wasn't sure I was thinking on doing anything, you know, physical. Get up on the bed. It's okay. Thanks, Bronwyn. I'm still trying to make sense of it all. I noticed I've got some Earl Grey in the hallway. I know it sounds a bit rude, but I'd really like some if you wouldn't mind. Sure, I'll be right back. I didn't see you here last night. What are you implying? It's just suspicious. I didn't even know the girl. You predicted her murder. Who's more suspicious? I'm tr- I didn't really know her. I saw her pictures in the newspaper. Can't remember what for right now. I'm Oscar. Is there anything else I can do? Oscar Wainwright, what a surprise. Oscar? What are you doing here? I, I know. We've already talked about this. You said you'd get into Bronwyn Castle's room somehow and have a look around. Why? To find evidence that ties her into Dorota's murder? Maybe you're not the right man for this job. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Drew Oscar, the guy I met this morning, the one I told you about. Yes. Answers. Reassurance. Forgiveness. Do you think he killed her? Not considering what he asked me to do.
I feel sad. Bronwyn said to stay away from him and the family. We're drawing too much attention to ourselves. We won't be able to finish our job. Job? Are you wearing a wire? You know why we're here. Don't make me say it. Say it. No. Stop being silly. It's seven o'clock and here's the latest August update. Chief DuPont of August Police is urging residents to be vigilant tonight following the brutal murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Whilst he stresses there is no immediate threat to the community at large, residents should be on the lookout until the killer is in police custody. Miss Shaw was found strangled in her bedroom home last night. Poe, I heard she was found by her mother. Truly awful. Mother caught me up to all sorts of mischief in my bedroom. Also in the news, emergency services were called to the crossroads at Grange Avenue and Church Street following a collision between two cars. There are no reports of any serious injuries, but you might want to take a different route for now. Oh no. It's going to be one of those nights, Poe. Stay with me, doll. I'll keep you safe. I'm not going anywhere. That's seven o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Sorry, we're closed. Come back tomorrow or make an appointment online. Yes, uh, what do you want? I already told the police she did all those things of her own accord. I didn't force her to do anything. Oh, the road to shore. Sorry, I'm afraid I didn't know her that well. For the August Chronicle, uh, she won some sort of award. I remember her cello, it kept reflecting the flash and ruining the shot. No, I went to her house, along with the reporter. It's better with these human interest stories to capture them in a natural habitat. If you ask me to drive there without my sat-nav, no. No, actually, I've been running a special offer on portraits since she came in for a studio session. Wait there. As you can see, there's photos here. They're on the cello. Yeah. Now this one's in colour. Beautiful hair. Oh, legs wrapped around. <laughs> Another one here. Oh, hang on. Do you see what I see? Nothing. She's just a very attractive girl. That's all. What do you mean? I don't think I like what you're implying, detective. Is that all? Friends? Yes. I know Violet very well. Violet takes it very well, actually. I like him like that. With a frosty exterior comes a soft, warm center. I'm sorry my analogy wasn't explicit enough for you. Yes, we have sex. Here. I'm usually here most nights. I live here, detective. Long story short, I'm divorced. My wife got the house, my business is all I have left. How did you hear about that? Anyway, it wasn't a date. I was doing a favour for Chief Dupont. Only lasted a few minutes. Are you working with him or not? Look, if you don't want to tell you then, I'm not gonna. 
No? Who's that? Never heard of him. Who what? Who do I photos? She sent some private photos to me by foot. Do you mean them? Yeah, yeah, I'll put them in an album for you. No. If you have anything else on Zach Weston, let me know. And I'm all for a good boudoir picture, but who are they for? There's definitely a strong connection between those two then. Well, unless they were for Oscar, I don't know. Unless there's someone else about to come out of the woodwork. That's what he says, but no one can back him up. He's on my radar now. I, I think you're supposed to tell me that. If he was taking photos of Dorota, maybe he fell for her? And the feeling wasn't mutual. Artists have muses, apparently. Wish I had one. Zach Weston says he was in his studio last night. Zach says he's sleeping with Violet, which I doubt. Zach did other photo sessions with Dorota. Boudoir. I wonder what else he's not telling us. Rain still says he was praying in his room, alone. Bronwyn and Lexi lied about being together last night. You're still following up Birmingham. Keep me posted. Yeah, you mentioned the word traveller to me, but he's nothing. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. That's it. Oh, do we really have to? How vulgar. Yes, I suppose that is what he'd say. But I've never let him lay a finger on me. He says we're in a relationship, but he doesn't act like it. He thinks he's irresistible to women. No. Sam, look, I can't talk right now. I'm doing phone readings. Got to pay for a job somehow. Lexi's locked in too late too. I can sort you out afterwards, yeah? I met him yesterday, doing the rounds, looking for reading work. Actually, he... Oh no. Um... He did mention Dorota. He said there was this girl he was planning to meet up with. Said she was alone every Monday night because her parents go to the cinema. Do you know what that means? It was Dorota Shaw. Fine, Sam. Birmingham. Mercury took us to Birmingham. We didn't know what for. We never really know what for. But we turned up. It started with a girl, Ginny. She was South African. I only mention it because that was its thing. Yeah, we didn't know at the time, but in hindsight, it was after South African girls. Three, to be exact. The Traveller wanted three. You should ask Bronwyn. She's the one that knows about rights. I just know it normally involves three, and all three share a common attribute. I guess you might call them demons, in as much as they can get inside us. They come from other worlds. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Quantum physics is real, didn't you know? <laughs> um, there are many universes. In technical terms, a traveller is a trans-dimensional being far more superior to us in as much as they can choose which reality to hang out in. We just get this one. Yes, disturbingly. 
It's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um, they choose a reality slash universe where they actually evolve to become the person they're possessing. So they jump in a few million years before our timelines intersect. They can't just jump into someone. It takes a few hours for that. They make the decision before they travel, which is why we can catch them. Yes, probably. The tarot doesn't just sat-nav us to normal murders. We've got to stop meeting like this. Seriously though, Sam, I'm working. Can't it wait? Just give me to wait, okay?